Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. And uh, I've got a good one for you today. Banks are on the brink, guys. And we're about to see an international calamity with financial institutions that uh, are just about to go crazy right now. So before I get into it, please take a second. Please subscribe to the channel. Please hit the like button. And uh, today we have a sponsor, Patriot Gold Group, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But uh, first things first, guys, Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank is the largest German bank, international player. We've heard them talked about over the last few years, but there is a real problem with Deutsche Bank right now. And we don't know if it's gonna happen tonight, if it's gonna happen tomorrow, this week, but it's gonna happen soon that they're gonna need intervention and they're gonna need somebody to step in and solidify the deposits, and solidify the bank to make sure that they don't just have a complete bank run right now. So their loans are completely upside down. There's an amazing article below talking about how, wow, how, why has this not happened sooner? And this is the thing. When this bank goes down, this could bring down the entire Eurozone. You could have banking, a banking calamity unlike anything that we've seen. Now you can sit there and say, I'm in Denver. What does that have to do with me, Dan? Has to do with all of us guys because this is going to be a global problem and if there's a shutdown in the european banks these people deal internationally they deal with uh, jp morgan chase they deal with citibank they deal with other financial institutions bank of america people here as well so this is a problem but their share price on friday dropped as much as 15 percent during trading and it was you know, brought to everybody's attention that, hey, this place may be in trouble. How about this? They interviewed some of the banking regulators. What did they say? Get your money out now. That's what they said. Well, that's, that, that instills confidence in you when they're being told to get out now. So German Chancellor steps forward. He says, hey, I want to make everybody aware that we know what's going on and Deutsche Bank is secure and uh, this could be a problem. Uh, not a problem, but don't worry about it. Well, it, it's ridiculous to think that it's not a problem. Now, here's the thing. Deutsche Bank may have to merge with somebody immediately. And they're talking about Comera Bank, uh, PNB uh, Paribus, which is a French bank. They may have to merge with them, one of their biggest competitors, right away. And uh, this would just be to save the bank and save the financial institutions. But think about this. Get your money out, people. That's what they're telling everybody. And this is done and being told to you because their loans are upside down. People are pulling money out. They're not making the money that they've always told us that they're making. Now, Deutsche Bank, guys, has had some shady things in the past. They've had, they've had international fines. They've had issues. And uh, now it's just coming to light how serious this is. Now, when you look at banking and you look at the issues that we've had lately, you have to look at everything that's been brought to light. Wells Fargo has a new uh, uh, customer service form that everybody has to sign, and it talks about not having litigation in it. Okay, that should concern you. The other thing that came and brought to my attention is that banks are closing people's accounts for no reason, okay? Someone wrote me from Chase Bank, didn't want me to use their name, which I was fine with. But what they're saying is that they had their account closed overnight. We're no longer going to be in the business you're in. And again, these people were just had their personal accounts there, had a lot of money in there, had good credit scores, never paid, uh, never paid a bill late, never had a problem. But that's what uh, happened to them. Completely shut it down. It's been raining here so much over the last two weeks. And, uh, one thing that I've gotten a bunch of requests for is, Dan, we need to right the world, okay? And you need to bring back mom yoga. So one of the greatest things in life, guys, you just feel the energy. I feel better now, don't you? Look at this, it's great. Ah, mom yoga at the montage. What could be better? Seriously, I don't know, free gold probably, but this is, this is gold to me. So anyways, um, share your thoughts. 
Let me know what you think so far. But guys, this is the warning. Bill Ackman, remember I talked about, hey, my favorite billionaire. Bill Ackman made a great TikTok, or a guy made a great TikTok of Bill Ackman that you have to read. And what it talks about is, hey, what do you, where do you put your money? Where's a guy that's got, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions of dollars at his disposal? We keep money in the bank to pay our bills. That's it. Look at the TikTok below. The link will be below. And he talks about putting money into Fidelity and different um, money markets account, if not T-bills, so they're protected by the federal government so that he doesn't have to worry about losing the cash. Okay? Smart. But again, not all of us can do this. Okay? Everybody's different. The idea with this is to protect yourself. You have to have a financial institution. You need multiple financial institutions so that you can pay your bills and get through this difficult time right now. Credit unions, banks, everybody. Because at some point in time, you're going to have a situation when you will not be able to get access to your money and the banks are going to shut down. There is a rumor that there's going to be a three-day bank holiday to start. Hmm. What would happen if you had three business days that you had no access to your ATM card, your debit card, your um, uh, credit cards, couldn't get cash of a bank, couldn't get the online banking? What would you do? That should motivate you enough right now just to talk about that. Ah, this nice. Just beautiful. It's a beautiful day in California, and uh, Mom Yoga is out and about. Okay? So share your thoughts so far, and uh, let me know what you guys think. Let's talk about our sponsor, Patriot Gold Group. You know, right now, there's so much happening with the banking industry that we have to all be concerned about it. Look at Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo Bank is telling us that we could be in a commodity super cycle and you don't want to miss it. You need to get yourself an IRA or 401k that's backed by physical metals and the best place to do that is Patriot Gold Group. Call them today, 888-330-1431. Get a free investor guide. Find out how you can get yourself your IRA that's backed by physical metals. Think about this. Wells Fargo is calling this a commodity super cycle and that we're easily going to see gold hit $3,000 and it's just going to increase year after year. Find out now before it's too late, guys. Call the good people at Patriot Gold. Let them know that I allegedly sent you 888-330-1431 today. Use the link below or give them a call right away. couple of stories out of Bank of America that should concern each and every one of us. And the first one is that Bank of America is stepping forward and saying, hey, we've determined what the next bubble is and everybody needs to sell their stocks now. You need to get out of the stocks right now and unload your portfolio. Huh. I don't feel comfortable with Bank of America as a whole. So for them to recommend that, that's kind of funny, you know? So... Where do you guys win right now? Seriously, where do you put your money that's safe right now? Do you listen to a guy like Bill Ackman? Do you sit there and take that seriously? Or is that not, you know, something you're going to listen to? I thought, thought it was great. I thought I'd love to have that guy on the show sometime. The next thing is banks are borrowing more money to guarantee your deposits. With fractional banking, the thing that 99% of us don't understand is that you think when you put your money in the bank that the money's sitting there. No, they lend that money out and they make money on your money immediately. They used to have to keep a percentage that got smaller and smaller and smaller to where now the fractional banking program is nothing right now. Absolutely nothing. So with that being said, the banks in the last week, okay, think about this, have borrowed $165 billion. Isn't that crazy? Just to solidify and make sure you can get your deposits. Now, Deutsche Bank that we just talked about, they are so concerned that people are going to show up and that there's a bank run. The bank runs have started, guys. People are pulling their cash out. Uh, I was at three banks on Friday and uh, talked to people. None of them would go on camera, but they all told me the same thing. 
uh, let's just say they were Chase, Wells Fargo, and Bank of America, that people are pulling out more cash than they've ever seen. Hmm, why is that? Not everybody's watching this channel. People are getting scared right now. People are getting worried that they are upside down. So <clears throat> think about this. The bank borrowing rate, okay, that they've used just for loans and things like that has gone up, which is credit card debt, things like that. It was $18 billion the week before, $54 billion last week. You cannot borrow yourself out of debt. People are borrowing and leveraging themselves to the highest levels that we've seen ever right now. Ever, 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 ever right now. It's a problem, guys. Share your thoughts so far. Let me know what you think. One thing that you have to be really concerned about is the rating agencies. Moody's is clearly the world's largest rating agency, and they're stepping forward right now, and they're saying that the banks are not secure. And we have to be concerned about this because they're concerned about bank runs. They're concerned about money coming out of the banks right now, and this should, should freak all of us out because Moody's is not telling you, don't worry, the banks are safe. They're saying... We don't know how they're going to curtail the problem. Atsy Sheath runs Moody's, and she's a regulator there saying, hey, this, is, this could be a huge problem, and people need to take this seriously right now because we haven't seen anything yet as far as the, uh, 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 you know, the banking system. Regulators have not done enough. Uh, Senate has not done enough. Congress, everybody has not done nearly enough to solve this problem. So there's that. Now think about this. When we think about the Depression, we think about 1929. We think about everything that went south in uh, 1929. Do you know that there was a bank run in uh, 1907 that created the FDIC, basically? And uh, it created another thing called uh, uh, postal savings. Think about this. Uh, William Howard Taft, president, um, he had elected in 1908. He came up with this wonderful idea of how you're going to have post offices that are going to offer savings account. You could have a maximum amount for a savings account of $2,000 that paid a little less interest than the banks did. But what it did was it made it so that if you were concerned about your bank, which people were at the time, and again, in history, there's no internet back then, we just kind of forget about these things that have happened to us in history, and people get a short memory, and people hate history also. What they did was they created this little treadmill that people were on. And believe it or not, they called this gerbil banking, okay? Because it just kept people on a treadmill. And I guess you didn't have hamsters back then, you had gerbils. So, I don't know, brings up other thoughts to me, but gerbil banking, guys. So, the idea with this is that the post offices were going to be more the banking institution. Mark my words, guys, there has been stories. If you've followed this channel for a year or so, we've talked about how the post offices want to offer more services and they say hey it's to get more people into the post office and to use it no this is to kind of repeat 1908 again and the idea with this is that it would make it so that you'd have an alternative to put your money and people with lower incomes people that uh wanted to stay out of the system they'd go use the post office what do you guys think about this i think this is crazy i think this is the end of it all when this happens oh this is beautiful out here today look at this Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Nice blue water. Huntington Beach. What am I? Laguna Beach, guys. Got Huntington Beach in the brain today. <sighs> Sorry, I'm a little distracted with mom yoga. So not, not myself this morning. So hope you guys understand. It's nice to be back. It's been what? It's been three weeks, guys? Four weeks? <sighs> Seems like forever. Jane Fraser, the CEO of Citigroup, steps forward and she said this week that the thing that concerned her the most was how quickly Silicon Valley Bank went down. And you know who also said this this week? Jerome Powell, that they never anticipated that something would go that quickly. So the idea with this, guys, is that we're not going to have a big warning when your bank goes down. This is going to happen and it's going to happen quickly and you won't have any time to prepare for that. And that's how you need to take this. Now, 
people generally, great article below, about how when they put money in a bank, they generally leave it in that bank. They really don't move it around. And people need to get themselves out of complacency and understand that these financial institutions could go south quickly. You could see a consolidation of large banks be put together from smaller banks. But again, how long is that going to take? A week? A day? The Deutsche Bank article talks about you know, how this thing could go down tonight. Okay? You watch this, you wake up the next day, and oh, Deutsche Bank failed, and that's that. But their story of what they're telling us is that nothing to worry about, it's all good. But when you have leaders talking this way, you need to be concerned about that. The other thing is the real estate market. With that foreclosure video I did this week, it was great because it really showed people how this is the beginning of this. The area that we've not seen uh, get tapped yet is the commercial real estate. This is what you're not hearing about commercial real estate. Yes, there are businesses going out of business. Yes, there's retailers that when you go there, the, oh, the pizza place is closed. You know, my favorite Mongolian barbecue where you put the frozen meat in the bowl and then the guy cooks it on the pan was there over 30 years. And I would meet people there because it was just a great place to sit, really friendly family that owned it. Done, finished after 30 years. But you don't know how bad that was. You don't know if they didn't pay their rent for a year. You just don't know. But what's happening is the lenders for commercial real estate are drying up right now. They're not funding these people. These people would get bridge loans so that, hey, listen, we're going to have a new tenant come in. They're going to be long term. We need to borrow X, Y, Z for six months. No, it's drying up, guys. They're going to start losing these buildings before our eyes. That's going to happen. And people don't want to think about that. The other thing is the foreclosures, it's just, uh, they're about to unlock that door. Once they unlock that door, you're going to see a ton of foreclosures. <clears throat> One thing that we talked about with that is that sale of that house, okay, uh, that you saw in the past video, the asking price was $488,000 because it's what their loan was, all the interest, everything that was outstanding for that day. That's what it was. So, it sold $190,000 above that. That money is supposed to go back to the original borrower. It's supposed to be their money. Now, most people, when they're going through foreclosure, are so upside down and so concerned and not even answering the doors or anything that you see a problem with this. And I've got a company I'm going to talk about a little later that has a way to help people tap that money and get it quicker. So, Oakland County, okay? Landlords are so sick of the fact that they can't evict anybody, Alameda, all these other places up there, that they are protesting now. They're saying this is outrageous that people have lived for three years without paying rent because the landlords, okay, they have to make their mortgage payment. They have to pay the insurance in the building, maintain the building, make sure the light bulbs are working, make sure the electricity is working, everything. And nobody sits there and goes, huh. What about the landlords? And, I, and I, every time I mention this, I get people that go, oh, I hate the landlords. Let them suffer. Okay. Well, they're suffering, guys. And what's going to happen is, based on the last story I just talked about, they're not going to be able to borrow money. And they're going to sit there and say, we don't care that you can't pay us. We're not lending you another dime. So think about this. There are people out there that have not made a mortgage payment in three years right now. Isn't that staggering to think about? And you know they didn't save that money. You know they bought stuff and spent that stuff and are living large right now, okay? But they're not making their house payments, not making their rent payments. So share your thoughts on this stuff so far. And one final thing is I found a great article about, hey, how much money can you make flipping houses right now? Now, a friend of mine lives in Huntington Beach and said, you've got to come by and see this house. Okay, let me take a look at it. The house was literally a crack den. They had people selling drugs out of this house in this nice neighborhood, and they went to the landlord and finally got the people out of the house, okay, the, the bad people. The landlord eventually sold the house for $940,000. That just, seriously, it was, a, it was a drug den, okay, for 940 grand. That house today, they did a remodel, they cleaned it up, they painted it, put a new yard in, lighting, beautiful, nice. You've got to come see the, the crack den, okay? So I drive over there, and the crack den is for sale, and there was an agent out in front. Hey, how's it going? Hey, you want to go on camera? No, 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 no. $1.3 million, okay, for two months' work. 
So 1.3, huh? 360 grand. Okay, how much did they put in the house? 150,000, who knows? Yeah. Will they get $1.3 million for it? It would be the record sale of the neighborhood, I found out. But that's what you're seeing. You're seeing craziness like this still with real estate. Who's going to borrow that money? Who's going to buy that? You know, I mean, it's crazy. You know, so my neighbor's like, oh, it's nice because there's a nice house there. But everybody's just sitting on pins and needles to see if that house will sell. What are you seeing in your neighborhood? I get people that write me and say, oh, Dan, it's collapsed. And uh, Michelle is in the appraisal business. And she says, Dan, I'm going to start feeding you information about what I'm saying. Because you want to know what's going on? Talk to the appraisers. You want to know what's going on? Talk to the foreclosure experts. When they take an expert like Doug that we talked about in the past, and the banks are saying, are you ready for what's coming in the next 90 days? Do you have the staff? Do you have the people? How many auctions can you do in a day? Think about this. Now, Doug can do one at a time by himself, but he's got a team that can make it so they can do this. This is what's coming in real estate. And people are not being able to borrow against their houses. And the people are trying to flip houses. I wonder if this guy's going to make, you know, $200,000 flipping that house. So hire a real estate agent. So he's got to pay the agent. And uh, it'll be interesting. So share your thoughts on this stuff so far. Let me know what you think. I just think that we're in for, uh, you know, wacky times right now. I love when experts step forward and make huge, wild predictions. Stephanie Pomboy of uh, Macro Mavens, she is a financier that says that we're going to see uh, stocks drop as much as 30% and that uh, people need to be ready for this. So that's a huge drop, 30%. But she also says you have to look at the severity of the bank situation and how bad it is. And that commercial real estate is failing around us right now and that we haven't seen that bubble drop. We just talked about that two minutes ago, about how serious commercial banking is going to be, and that she says this is something that people are not looking at, and they're just trying to look at one thing. And again, people get deflected. People, hey, look over here. It's okay. How does it affect me? I don't care if commercial banks go down. Yeah, you do. You, commercial lending, commercial builders, everybody. You care, you care about it all, guys. You want our economy globally to be solid. And... You know, look at Australia. Look at the problems they're having with real estate. Look at the UK's real estate. They're having problems. Canada real estate having problems. You don't think the stock market could drop 30%? I do. The second. The other thing is Elon Musk steps forward. And Elon Musk says, sends out an, an email to all his employees at Twitter at 2.30 in the morning and says, uh, the option, the office is no longer optional. 2.30 in the morning, the office is no longer optional. You have to be there. So, you know, if you've seen any of the TikToks, if you've seen any of the videos of these people working at uh, Twitter, they're a really good life, guys. They basically hung out all day and maybe got an hour or two's worth of work in. So now that he's there, you know, everything's getting changed up. The final story. And this blew me away when I read this because I had, I had to research to make sure, is this right? And then I found the press release. Panera Bread has a loyalty program where if you buy stuff, you can get free sandwiches, coffee, and things like that from that bakery sandwich shop, whatever you want to call Panera Bread. Um, bread store, okay? They're going to do biometric data for the loyalty program. They're going to take your palm print, and they're going to keep your data. Do you want that? Do you want your biometric data? Do you want your hand print, your palm print, registered with a corporation that right now is closing stores and maybe out of business? You get concerned about that at all? I would be. The answer would be, no, I'll never go there again if that's the case. I'll never use it. I will never sign up for that. This is not, hey, it's the future, Dan. You know, you know, have your retinal scanning. No, pass. Pass, Adina, okay? Please do not forget to hit the like button. Hope you enjoyed mom yoga today as much as I did. Please don't forget to uh, um, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget we have an email list that you can sign up below. Take a look at our sponsor. And uh, reach out if you need anything or have any questions. Hello at iallegedly.com is the best email to reach me at. Onward and upward, guys. I will see you guys very soon.